Welcome to lesson 6 of getting started with Cabmaster software. Today we're going to start by looking at reports. So you can go to file, report, and you can click on any of these things in here. The common ones are not, and the temp aren't actually full of reports, the other ones are. So we can go to say board report, board two column, let's choose this one here, or let's choose a one column, that'll work. It's literally how many columns are on the page, you can choose any of these reports you like. Okay, so once the report's loaded, you can see if I make this larger, I literally have one column on the page, and each page will show me. So put this at 100%. Here we go. So you can see there's one column, each cabinet gives you all the details of each cabinet, um, the part quantity of each part. So I've got three of these drawer box bottoms. These are the dimensions, these are the edging that are on them. Um, so that's quite good to see reports. This will actually, actually manually cut the shelf and the base. Now, the other way to bring out report, Control R, also brings you straight to report. And as an example, this is a three column. So this will literally have three columns. Depends on what you want to look at. This is really good for assembly. There's a lot of different types of reports. Okay, now you can see it's got literally three columns on the page, a bit smaller, a bit more compact. Um, again, depends what you want to do in there. The other thing you can do, you can actually click on a cabinet. So let's just click on this cabinet here, right click and go report. This will do exactly the same thing, apart from it will only report on the one cabinet. So you can select on a cabinet specifically to do one. It's nice and easy. So this will only have that one cabinet on the page. And again, one column. The other things you can do with reports, I can just press control R for this. Um, door reports, hardware reports, kickboard reports, um, poly report for your doors, uh, quantities report. This isn't too bad. Quantities by cabinet or quantities in total. You can do quotations, you can do hardware reports, you can get cut lists, you can do a whole lot of different things. So this will give me the quantities for the entire job. If you've got a pricing set up, it'll give you cost and sell price. You can turn these things off and on. Uh, volumes, um, you know, bench tops, doors, panels, edging. How much edging do I need? I need 45 meters of 18 mil edging. Um, hardware, what hinges have I got? What runners have I got? What legs have I got? There you go. So they're all set up in here. That's a decent report, that one, quantities. Okay, once you've done done reports, other things we can look at today, drawing properties, hardware. We're going to look at different forms actually. So we're going to go to the managers. Hardware form, so a form and a table. A table, this is the raw data that has everything in it. It's a little bit harder to understand. You need to know what you're doing in here, but you do have access to all these things. You can put pricing and things in. So for example, adjustable legs. If you go to the form, this is just one row of that table. But it lets you makes it much easier, cleaner interface. So adjustable legs. Uh, this is my cost price. So if I want to mark up labor time, um, is it part of a hardware pack? Um, do I have a part number? Do I have a brand? Any any of these details you can add into it. So even my base plate, um, you know, cover caps, hinge, anything you want in here. As it can be plumber, you can have anything you'd like in here. Um, whatever you want to do with it, your electrician, door bump, bumpers, you can do anything in here you would like, put in brand numbers or those sorts of things. So the hard, the form is much easier to use in the table, same as with hinge sets. So this is all the hinge sets, so we've got bloom insert, a bloom screw, you can see these ones through here, but everything goes sideways and it's much, quite complex in there. In here, very easy to use, this is just the bloom inserter, this is the ones, uh, the hinge and hinge plate when you use the whole set, so that tells you you know, if you've got a lift, this is the one I want to use by default with this plate. There's a second lift, this is the other one I want to use. So that's quite easy to use. Run it, edit that. Now, we get a lot of customers ringing us up and going, I've got to make an adjustment to my runners. I think they're out by a little bit. Okay, that's fine. So you can go to a runner. Now, this can get a little bit overwhelming. Break it down. Just look at one thing at a time. So we're going to start with a really simple one here. Standard Bloom 230ME, a standard runner. Quite commonly, so this is the draw configuration. This is just for the 250. You've got these are the size are available. This one here, the construction, the gap. Now, help button. It shows me here what it is. Oh yeah, between the draw box and the carcass inside, 12.5. Now we follow what the manufacturer recommendations are. 
So in this case it's 12.5. But a lot of people go, oh, but what if the board's a little bit thicker than 16.2 or something? Change it. Let's call this 13.0. There you go. That's how you change that gap right there. That's all you need to do. You've got control over this. Now, one thing I really need to point out, same thing as a, as a few moments ago, these are the forms, these are the original tables. If you open the original table, it'll tell you this is a permanent edit. You have full access to these tables, but you need to know what you're doing in every one of them. If you go into the runner holes, for example, if you edit this here, you go, okay, I want to get this hole, this hole here, the third hole along, it's a little bit in the wrong spot. I want to change it to 220, 222, for example. I can do that here. So you've got control over that. I want to change the height. I want to change an offset here. You've got control over that. Just go and change it. Now, you can go into there. You can see. Oops, sorry. If you hit, if you hit the save button, it makes it a whole lot easier. I can save it for this length, or I can save it for all the lengths. So if I go save all lengths, okay, then I can go change this one here. Let's go into say to 550, back into here as now 222. So I've now changed it for all the lengths. But if I go to the original table. This one here is still at 219. And the reason being is the way we do this deliberately is we leave the original table alone and we edit between them. That's how we do it. So it's a <laughs> secret business. Um, point is, you can now reset it. I can always go complete reset for those ones. Yes. And I can go to the, all the other ones and just go reset them all or reset for all lengths. So if I go to 250, reset 250. Yes. Now go back into here. That's now back to 219. So you can't break the original table, but you can make whatever edits you like. So it's very quick and easy to do that. Same as, let's go choose a premium runner. Um, you've got back holes. Now, you don't have to understand what the formulas actually mean. So this one here, the back hole. Oh, crikey, my back hole. I, I need to move it out by 10 mil. Okay. What you can do here is you go, I don't understand what all this is saying. It's dim one. What is that? I don't know what dim one is. But I know I've got to go plus 10 millimeters. That's what you need to do. If you want to adjust the hole by a given amount, type the amount in there. Try it. If you're going the wrong way, go minus 10 millimeters. So you don't need to understand the first bit. You don't need to change the first bit. If you know what you're doing, absolutely go and do what you want to do. But if you don't know what you're doing, you just need to change something by a given amount of millimeters, just type it in there. And same as here, you go plus 10 millimeters. Done. That will change it by 10 millimeters. Um, hole diameter. I only want a little, you know, I want to put a, a three mil hole and I only want to go two mil deep. You can do that as well. You've got, you don't have to put the millimeters in, but it's always safest to. You've got full control over these holes. What do I want to do with it? What offset do I want it to be? What depth do I want them to be? You've got control over all these things. And if you want to do something slightly different, just put it in there and change it. I'm not going to hit the save button on this one. I'm going to hit OK. But you have control. You don't have to understand the formula. You can just go plus 10 millimeters. Then my bottom holes, um, draw front holes. If these things are in your semis, there's a lot of formulas in here. But again, you are, oh, I'm not sure, but I want to go you know, 12 millimeters to the, to the side. Cool. An extra 12 millimeters. Done. Just leave the first bit alone. If you don't know what it is, leave it alone. Just add something to the back. So that's a really quick and easy way to do things in here. And then hit the save and or save or save or all links depends which which one you want to do. So you have control over every runner, every hole. If it's available, um, so if we go to, let's choose someone different, different. Um, let's choose one of these ones. If there, any of these holes are available, they will um, pop up in here. So if they're in use, I'm not going to find anyone in use at the moment, am I? Um, there you go, so that one disappeared. So it has back holes but no bottom holes. So if they're available, they'll appear in here. So you've got control over that as well. So again, you can control every run you like. If you use the forms, this side, the left-hand side, you can't break anything because you always go reset for everything. Yes, I'll reset everything the way it should be. And you can't damage anything. If you go and play with the tables, you can break things. They're the permanent files. But these are the, the edits, what we call the edits along the way. Have a play with that. That's quite easy to do. Now, the last thing I want to show you today is machining. So if you've got a Cabmaster Premium license, um, you'll have the machining option. So you can go to machining here. You can hit the export machining. This will output um, all the DXF files, all the data for the entire job. So there's 118 files we just created. You can then come in here and choose. Let's go, let's have a look what we've got in here. I'm going to go to 36 by 18 HMR. 
and you can go generate nests. And this will generate the nests for all those parts in the list we've just created. There we go. So we can see here we've got four sheets. There's one, two, three, four sheets. And I can look at each sheet individually. So you can see my corners, how it's true shape nesting. Putting parts inside parts. That's nice. There we go. There's my three. There's my four. So we can just go back to the overview. gives you all of them. So these are my parts. I can turn things off and on through here. If I want to go turn these parts off here, it tells me I've changed something. Um, so I go turn these ones here off. It's randomly turning things off at this stage. Um, generate nests again. It will now generate nests without those parts included. So you can see I've got more space on that last sheet. If you stretch this page out as well, you can actually see all the information about it, what material it is, the dimensions of the parts, quantity. Um, now, from here, the other thing you can do, you've actually got a CNC config or a config button here. This lets you get into the background of our Ease Nest or Enroute, whatever product you're using in the back end. You can come in here and play with your tools. Um, so in whatever tools you want, if you've got something different with one of your tools, a 45 degree cutter, if it's not 45 degrees, you get in the little marks in the corners, this might be 45.5 or something like that. You can come in here and change that and hit the save button as well. Um, so you've got control, you can add new tools, delete tools, whatever you want to do in here as well. You've got um, a lot of, you've got a full configuration here, what do you want to do with all your tools? It shows you what they look like. Um, spirals, 45 degree cutters, cool. So there's your tools. Strategies, if you've got strategies, well, you will have strategies, you can come in here and you can edit your strategies in here as well, um, and which tool is you want to add to it. You can then start adding tools into here, or you can just load the strategies already here. Number of passes, final depth per pass, feeds and speeds, is it conventional or climb, lead in, lead out, your lengths, all these options are here. So you can control the strategies, you can then start adding in something different, I'm not going to do that into here, I've got to choose a something like that go add you can then specify in here what it is what depth you want to go then your feeds and speeds again for this new tool then you can hit save the strategy or delete the strategy I'm not going to save it in this case because I don't want to change it because it's in use but you can do no I don't want to change that um, again define your layers so these are the layers what we're doing in the ATP so this is a border layer this is what I want to do with it small parts user depth from cab master Design depth of strategy. You've got full access to your, all your strategies in here as well, ATPs. Um, ATP, you can select the ATP here if you want to change your ATP. Uh, and then you can define the layers of the ATP. Um, same as machine settings. If you want to change something like labels, if you want to turn your labels off or on in here or change a label design, we change this one to the Cabmaster label. Cool, save that. Um, exit. Next time you run Generator Nest, it will then be using those new settings. So there we go. You won't see the changes because it's going to be in the output, obviously, but the changes have been made, what we did in there. So again, that's how you can quick it, and it's in machine view down the bottom here. Um, so you've got control over what ATP you use, what, um, yeah, and how you generate your nests, all those sorts of things. So back to plan view. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been helpful to you today.